the new face to face off on the debate stage. Voters getting a first glimpse at how former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg holds up on the presidential stage, already spending millions in rising in the polls, but hoping to find a foothold in the race for the White House. So how do you do? We go straight now to ABC News political director Rick Klein. Byron, any swagger that Mike Bloomberg might have had coming into the debate faded under harsh attacks on his record, on his wealth, on his treatment of women. Yes, he defended himself, but this was by far the Democrats' feistiest debate, and it reflects real anxieties and, and even angst about the state of this race. Mike Bloomberg and Senator Bernie Sanders now look like the best position candidates to go the distance, and that has a lot of Democrats worried about what that says about the party. As a result, the candidates just flout out unloading on each other this evening. Byron? Thank you, Rick. We now turn to ABC's David Wright, breaking down the highlights on and off the Democratic debate stage, with a frontrunner facing heat for some of his supporters, accused of bad behavior. Tonight in Las Vegas, a new contender right in the line of fire. Democrats take a huge risk if we just substitute one arrogant billionaire for another. I don't think you look at Donald Trump and say, we need someone richer in the White House. For the first time, billionaire businessman Mike Bloomberg was there on stage at this NBC debate, dodging the incoming. The mayor says that he has a great record. He has not managed his city very, very well when he was there. Bloomberg has been been rising in the polls, having spent more than $400 million of his own money, mostly on advertising. That makes him a formidable player. They've been sitting out here for 10 months, 12 months, raising money, persuading people, going to caucuses, and all of a sudden he just wants to drop in. I'm a New Yorker. I know how to take on an arrogant con man like Donald Trump that comes from New York. Billionaires today, if you can believe it, have an effective tax rate lower than the middle class. Senator, so maybe you're just the tax code. Why are you complaining? Who <laughs> wrote the code? You, you and your, did. You and you your and campaign. Con, you and your camp, not me. He has to prove himself and welcome to the NBA, so he'll get that treatment. It's ridiculous. We're not going to throw out capitalism. We tried that. Other countries tried that. It was called communism, and it just didn't work. Tonight, plenty of sharp elbows on display, with Senator Elizabeth Warren in particular going on offense. Mayor Buttigieg really has a slogan that was thought up by his consultants to paper over a thin version of a plan that would leave millions of people unable to afford their health care. It's not a plan, it's a PowerPoint. And Amy's plan is even less. It's like a Post-it note. I'm search. more of a Microsoft Word guy. I take personal offense since Post-it notes were invented in my state. <laughs> Senator Amy Klobuchar and Mayor Pete Buttigieg went at it tooth and nail. If you're going to run based on your record of voting in Washington, then you have to own those votes, especially when it comes to immigration. I wish everyone is, was as perfect as you, Pete. Democrats have yet to settle on a moderate candidate in a crowded field of contenders. I think Michael Bloomberg is the main beneficiary of Joe Biden's fall. And he's also benefited from the fact that Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, while have risen, have stagnated. They've settled in some degree on Michael Bloomberg, but not settled solidly. The billionaire's debut comes as the anti-billionaire Bernie Sanders appears to be locking down the race. Both of them 78 years old, both taking heat tonight. We shouldn't have to choose between one candidate who wants to burn this party down and another candidate who wants to buy this party out. The Vermont senator came into tonight's debate as the undeniable frontrunner, having won the most votes in Iowa and New Hampshire. A new ABC News poll has Sanders leading the Democratic field by double digits. Sanders built a movement during the 2016 campaign railing against the billionaire class. Our goal must be a financial system and an economy that works for all of our people. But he consistently draws fire for being too fringe. Some of his supporters do too. Just this weekend, a Bernie supporter got into a fight at a Colorado rally. The altercation captured on camera by CBS's Denver affiliate. There's a whole series of Bernie supporters, many of which are called Bernie bros, who seem to cross the line 
in, in how they respect people and the type of language they use. The Bernie Sanders campaign hates the term Bernie bro. They see it as a vestige of 2016. Today on The View, Megan McCain pressed Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez about the aggressive behavior of some Sanders supporters. AOC is a Sanders supporter too. The one thing that connects women on the left and women on the right is the abuse that we have all been subjected to by Bernie bros. It is the most violent, the most misogynistic, the most sexist, the most harmful to a certain extent you know we have to always reject hate reject vitriol um, and denounce that kind of behavior um, also you know we also know the amount of anonymous activity that happens on the internet and that simply is difficult to control to see calling names threat you know like physically we cannot work anymore Jaconda Arguello Klein has been on the receiving end of some of those attacks. She's the secretary treasurer of Nevada's powerful Culinary Workers Union, which did not endorse a candidate this year. That decision, plus some blunt criticism of Medicare for All, outraged some Sanders supporters who let loose in a very personal way. They have so many tweaks. My daughter sent me three last night, and, and I said to her, don't worry about it. We're going to be fine. Tonight, Hello. Senator Sanders responded. And if there are a few people who make ugly remarks, who attack trade union leaders, I disown those people. They are not part of our movement. Tonight, well, the debate at say, times was raw, especially with Bloomberg there, there on the stage. Right. You weren't a fan of Obamacare? Uh, I am a fan of Obamacare. At the Since beginning, when, Mr. Uh, yeah. Mr. Vice President, or I was there. Let me finish. Mayor. Thank you. Bloomberg not only has deep pockets, he also has crossover appeal, having served as the Republican mayor of New York. He says that he has the resources able to take on President Trump, but also the temperament to do so. He's witty on social media. His team is creative. And so with his executive experience in New York and all of that money, he's been able to attract a lot of people to his campaign. I'd like to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat at broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. He's faced accusations of sexism for what some have described as a corporate culture hostile to women. He's refused to release female executives from non-disclosure agreements in lawsuits they've settled with his company. So, Mr. Mayor, are you willing to release all of those women from those non-disclosure agreements so we can hear their side of the story? We have a very few non-disclosure agreements. Uh, how many Let is me that? finish. How many is that? None of them accuse me of doing anything other than maybe they didn't like the joke I told. And let me just put, and let me put, there's a be agreements between two parties that wanted to keep it quiet, and that's up to them. Bloomberg's also haunted by his longtime support of the NYPD stop and frisk policy, which targeted minorities. But as he prepared to run for president last year, Bloomberg apologized for Thank stop and everyone. frisk. I was wrong. In Tonight, the, the issue the was States. still front and center. Stop and frisk, which went after African-American and Latino people in an outrageous way. The one thing that I'm um, really worried about, embarrassed about, was how it turned out um, with stop and frisk. The Democratic voters I talked to say they use these debates as basically a gut check. So we'll see in the coming weeks if voters say that they could picture Mayor Bloomberg standing next to President Trump in the fall. Tonight, President Trump offered some hints as to who he sees as the biggest threats. At a campaign rally 300 miles away from Las Vegas, he took aim at Bloomberg. I hear he's getting pounded tonight. You know he's in a debate. And Sanders. The DNC is going to take it away from Bernie again, and that's okay because we don't care who the hell it is, we're going to win. Tonight's debate and Saturday's caucuses may help to decide who does face it. I'm David Wright for Nightline. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.